about a big hand for Brad Oaks, doing a wonderful job today. A big hand for all the other acts that you've seen so far. All the other acts. We've got a big hand for all the acts that have ever worked here at the Gershwin Room. We've yeah. got a big hand for the cleaning staff that will be here later. Yeah. I never get recognition on days like this, never. This is the best audience I've ever had. Sorry about the premature evaluation. The SB, the Gershwin Room at the Esplanade Hotel, I mean, uh, just out of interest, by a show of hands, who hasn't been here before? Who hasn't been here before? Just out of interest, by a show of hands. Who has been here before? And who's here right now? <laughs> just some of you. Just out of interest, by a show of hands, how many people here could honestly say that they have never, ever sailed around the world solo? Never sailed around the world solo. <laughs> So most of you have. <laughs> I guess like me, you've done it without any fanfare or publicity. You just got on with the job, eh? <laughs> Not too many people know this, but I am multilingual every time I perform these days. I do my entire act in a different language. Today I've chosen English. <laughs> Although some of my pauses are in Spanish. So do watch out for that. And I'm a very clean comedian. I only, I only used the word fuck once in my act, and that was it. <laughs> well done. I'd like to change the pace a bit now. I've got a pet poodle called Jack Russell. <laughs> Understandably, it's got an identity crisis. I've got a pet sheep called Abba. Any sheep in the world that can say its own name backwards. <laughs> I'm trying to teach my tortoise how to roll over. It's halfway there. <laughs> Recently I invited 20 people to my place for a sausage sizzle. We all sat around and just watched that sausage get burned to a crisp. <laughs> You know, uh, they say that too many cooks spoil the broth. Well, I was at a restaurant the other night and there was broth on the menu. I asked the waiter how many cooks made it and he said one. And I said, well, this is going to be a pretty good broth. <laughs> Recently I performed a 50th birthday party for a gastroenterologist and we did a contra deal. <laughs> Exchange for my performance. I've got a five years unlimited supply of colonoscopies. <laughs> so if I go if I go every six months, I'll really get my money's worth. <laughs> right now, I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. I just came first in a mime yodeling competition. <laughs> and I'd just like to say that I do all of my own choreography. <laughs> Just catching my breath. <laughs> I used to be a drummer for a band called Cancelled. <laughs> and they known, but nobody ever turned up to our gigs. And we changed our band name to Free Booze. We got big crowds, but they were disappointed, angry big crowds. <laughs> we've got Alcoholics Anonymous, we've got Gamblers Anonymous. I've just come up with Anonymous Anonymous. <laughs> For people who don't want to divulge their particular issue, but need the support of a group. <laughs> Here's an interesting fact. One in two people make up 50% of the world's population. <laughs> you can quote me on that. A few weeks ago, I helped this really old guy cross the road. I carried his walking stick for him. <laughs> and he proved to me he didn't really need that stick. Because he hobbled after me for three blocks to get it back. I bought a can of worms. For no other reason than to prove that I actually opened a can of worms. 
They say a picture's worth a thousand words. That didn't go down very well at school when I had to do a 3,000 word essay and I handed in three pictures. <laughs> didn't go down very well at all. <laughs> You just saw Elliot Goblet go to water. <laughs> Last year I was going to travel around the world, but I decided to stay in Australia because I met so many nice people at my going away party. <laughs> I've just had my 40th birthday celebration, which as you can imagine was well overdue. <laughs> Actually, I just hit the big 5-0, 50 friends on Facebook. <laughs> just catching my breath. <laughs> Went to a restaurant, there was a sign that said, we take all cards, so I gave them a sympathy card. <laughs> With the word, sorry, I left my wallet at home. <laughs> the next girlfriend told me she wanted a bit more mystery in our relationship, so one night in bed, I wore a Zorro mask <laughs> and asked her to guess who. I hope when you start taking out a woman called Anna, and a surname that must be phylactic, Anna Phylactic, how do you introduce her to your family? Sometimes I'll throw in a joke that has no real punchline to test if anybody's faking their laughter. And I can tell you on that occasion nobody faked their laughter. Very few did. I hate it when you're in a motel room under the shower giving yourself a really good scrub and you realise you've been using the white bath plug instead of the soap. That happens to me all the time. I have a total of three and a half alcohol three days a week. I don't drink every day of the week for the first half of the day. <laughs> Haven't had a smoke for over three years now. How about that, eh? Not that impressive when you consider that I've never smoked. <laughs> I got thrown out of an art gallery during an exhibition of nude paintings because I streaked. And they wouldn't accept my argument that sometimes life imitates art. <laughs> the controversy over car airbags the earthquakes and hurricanes overseas, the New Zealand election, the tension with North Korea, the headbutting of Tony Abbott. <laughs> All totally unrelated items, but what that list does prove is that I can be topical. <laughs> Here now is my impression of somebody doing a high wire act, a high wire act. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bit of sniggering there, but uh, that was done without a safety net. <laughs> Danger is my middle name. I know what you're all thinking right now. I know what you're all thinking. I bet Elliot Goblet is shit at welding. And you'd be right. But it doesn't make me feel any less of a man. All well, that joke needs is a punchline. I think it's on its way. Turn it from not working to working. There's an old bloke called Bob who lives down the road from me and the poor guy's got dementia. Recently sent me a postcard which read, wish I was here. <laughs> I sent that postcard twice. <laughs> I hate it when you're walking on what you think is a pedestrian crossing and you realise you've mounted a zebra. I hate it when you're at Luna Park, sitting down, having a big yawn, and somebody tries to stick a table tennis ball down your throat. <laughs> I hate it when you're having sex inside the shaft of a cannon, 
and some smart ass lights the cannon and propels you both into the atmosphere. That happens to me all the time. You know, that one's my favourite, but it hardly goes well. Enough. Just shows you where, my, where I am and where the rest of the population is. I hate it when you're having sex at a construction site and they toss you out because they won't accept your version of a hard helmet. <laughs> I hate it when you're having sex deep inside a haystack and at that critical moment you get pricked by a needle. <laughs> I hate it when you're having sex on a bed of hot coals and she wants to be on top. <laughs> I hate it when you're having sex with a blow-up doll and someone in the cinema recognises you. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. <laughs> you know, relationships are tough for us comedians. For example, when you make them laugh in bed, women think you just can't shut off from your work. Also, they're a bit uneasy about a microphone in the bed. <laughs> Not to mention a bottle of water. And people at the end of the bed laughing. <laughs> Time check. I'm down to the final stanza of my act. Do you ever wonder if we'll ever take two? Do you ever wonder if we'll ever have a book called Ventriloquism for Dummies? Do you ever wonder why a trailer isn't twice as big as a semi trailer? Do you ever wonder if the rainbow in the sky? is nature's way of supporting same-sex marriage. Yeah. I voted yes. Do you ever wonder if the fridge light ever comes on after the door is closed? <laughs> it doesn't, that's over a week of trials. Do you ever wonder how unfair it is that only one hole in your watch band gets all the action? <laughs> Do you ever wonder how many ping pong balls on average a guy would have to stick down his trousers before people noticed there was a sizeable bulge? <laughs> the answer's 14. <laughs> Do you ever wonder what would happen if shit really did hit the fan? <laughs> the answer's nothing, that's over a week of trials. <laughs> I hate it when somebody comes to your front door and puts their finger over the peephole. So to get around that, I've got 11 peepholes. <laughs> and whenever I'm standing in a queue, I'm really paranoid that somebody's going to push in, so I'll always stand hard up against the person in front of me. And it doesn't take long before people let me just pass through to the front counter. <laughs> okay, my time is up. Thank you very much. Bye.